Well, once an educator, always an educator. So I won't say I was an educator. I still feel the same way. I'm still an educator. But I have on the other end of the phone a person who is working, I guess, daily uh, on really trying to do what needs to be done to help people close the achievement gap. She's out in the Midwest. Her name is Renee Aziz, and she is, and her team works with this whole gap, achievement gap, and all the good stuff that they are doing. So we've uh, been talking about it and really trying to figure out or understand some of the, some of the problems that actually uh, exist that need help. We didn't talk about parents in the first half, Renee, and we mm -hmm. need to talk about how parents can. I, I, let me just back up a minute because we were talk. We talked a little bit about how that little black boys, and I say boys in particular because they mm -hmm. are often sent to the office for no real reason. Uh, they just are not understood, and uh, so. Parents come in, and then some parents, they think they have to then correct their ch children or, or give them discipline in some fashion. So right. talk about what parents need to know and how parents can uh, be involved in, in the situation of uh, achievement gap. Okay. Well, I think, you know, at Virtuoso, what we really um, work with educators to do is figure out how to connect with parents in a more proactive and productive way. And our mantra when we do that is, is that parents are children's first teachers, and right. their role in how successful students are cannot be minimized. And so there are many things that we encourage uh, parents to to do, and as we do that, we, we kind of talk about what I call the four A's. So, parents, I'm going to give you four tips that really are about uh, what we can do. I'm a parent myself. I have two children of, of what we should be doing in education. The first A is about our approach. Uh -huh. And by that I mean we have got to collaborate with our students educators that all the way from their principals to the teachers and we've got to do that before an issue comes up as parents let's not wait until you know the school has to call and say i'm concerned about though the the teachers and the administrators in um, our children's schools should know who we are and what we expect of our children immediately from day one yes. so our approach has to be a collaborative one I think the second A is about our attitude, and that's our thoughts about the school process itself. So we need to be communicating to our students explicitly, not just assuming that they know what we expect, but we need to be explicit in communicating to our children what we expect of them academically and from a behavior standpoint. You know, our students work really hard, and, and it might not be that, you know, you, our students can, can bring home all A's all the time. I'm not saying that we should hold them to those standards. We should hold high standards, but we should be acknowledging success. But talk about that very explicitly, not just assuming, oh, they know what I expect. We need to talk about mm -hmm. that. The third A, I think, is um, the atmosphere that we create for our students to be successful in school, whether that's from an academic standpoint or discipline-wide. We need to make sure we create a space in our home where there's homework time. There's a focus area for them to be doing that and concentrating. We need to, to the extent possible, make sure that our students feel safe and supported at home so that some of the anxieties that come along with all the things that kids have to go through in school. School is a tough place. You know, if you're not in the school environment every day, we can sometimes lose track of how much our students have to do. They are working really hard, and so we want to create an atmosphere in our home that's, that's peaceful and, 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 and can really help our students be the best that they can be. And then the fourth A is our actions, and that means what are the strategies that we're going to do to make sure that our students are successful. And that, that 
that might not mean that we can go to the school every event that the school have, has, or it might not be the room parent because we're working. But again, we have to make sure that we have some strategies for how we're showing both our, our students, educators, and our students themselves uh, what we value in terms of their education. So those four A's are really important. Okay. And, and the uh, thing, too, that I see as a problem uh, and and it's a necessity. But so often we have so many single parents who are out working. Yeah. That the the kids come home from school, they don't really have an opportunity to spend time talking to to mom or dad or whatever. Mm-hmm. They don't. What they do is spend time on computer playing games on computer things like that, as opposed to really getting down to doing schoolwork. And I I don't know, but from what I can recall, the the schoolwork would be done at night when the kid is tired and, you know, mom is like, did you do your homework? Mm -hmm. And things like that that I don't know, it's not one of the four A's, but... No, I think it fits. Yeah, I think it fits with atmosphere. I mean, some of that is about creating a, a setting where, yes. you know, we're proactive. We are, we're not just like kind of leaving our students to themselves to figure out the best ways for them to meet the requirements that come from school. So I think it fits with one of the A's for sure. And so I guess I would ask you, what do you feel has to be done in the classroom to improve teacher-student relationships and the outcomes? Good. That's a great question. So at Virtuoso, we work really hard to help educators become more culturally responsive. But And that requires kind of two things. First, our teachers have to have knowledge of effective instructional practice and classroom management. You, and we would think as parents, oh, well, they get that. They, you know, they get that when they go to school. And they do get some. And our teachers get professional development training all the time to really try to improve their skill. But consider this. If If we do some really good things in the wrong ways, then we're not going to get the outcomes that those strategies should have, right? So someone can give us a recipe to say, if you follow this recipe, then you'll Mm. get this result. Mm -hmm. But if we're we're tweaking that recipe to our own, you know, in our own style, then the result might be a different product. And that's what I see in school. So... The second thing that we really work with educators to do is not just focus on the practice, right? There are many skills that educators have, but before you those those practices can be effective, we first have to make sure that our teachers have the awareness, the knowledge, and the skills about how culture influences both learning and behavior. And really that requires not that they just think about the other. So if I'm, for example, um, a a white teacher and I have a classroom of majority African-American students, that's not, that doesn't mean that I just focus on, well, let me learn about African-American culture. I do need to do that, but I also need to learn about my own culture. That's something we don't always think about. We have to do some self-awareness so that we understand fully our own cultural values and beliefs because they're guiding our behavior all of the time. So at Virtuoso, we really work on those two things. Okay. And so uh, in terms of when you say work on those things, I'm thinking about the kind of teacher support that is given. I, I know you mentioned about you know, um, the teacher training or teacher workshops or whatever, mm-hmm. but the kind of support that teachers are getting in the schools and are they getting what they need? Or do you think that they're getting the kind of support that is really important to help these youngsters? Some are, but not at the degree that we need them to. So most often um, what I find is that many teachers receive a one- or two-day training on culture at some point in their career, but that's not comprehensive or much less ongoing or frequent enough. And so that, that's one of the, the, the things that makes Virtuoso different. We try to establish an ongoing uh, relationship with schools, and so whether or not we're in the school 
providing the training or communicating outside of the school setting, you know, online or on Facebook or, you know, just keeping constant conversation about how important culture is, that's how you start to shift people's awareness. If you talk about it one time, people will be with you for that session and then forget about it. It's about changing our thoughts in our behaviors. So here's just a quick example. You know, we we talked about the discipline gap and how that leads to the achievement gap. One of the most common reasons, um, you know, African Americans are sent to the office is for talking out in the classroom, right? Many of our teachers expect students to raise their hand when they're responding in class. Right. So many of our, our students, for some, you know, don't respond in that way. And so they see responding to classroom discussions as a little more formal. So they'll say, yeah, I know, that's like when. So they're not raising their hand, but they're actively just shouting out. Yes. Well, that's really a cultural nuance. We call that communication style back channeling. And it's often seen in African American culture. We don't have to just wait till someone stops talking to right. chime in. Right. We just have that kind of back and forth ongoing dialogue. Yes. But imagine if I'm unaware of that as a communication style. I can easily misinterpret that as classroom disruption. So then I'm aggravated by it yes. and student gets sent to the office. The students like I didn't do anything because to them they really didn't. Exactly. You know they're just they're just talking. But that's the kind of training I'm talking about. That's what we do for educators. We talk explicitly about how all of our behavior is shaped by culture. And so what's the what do you do as a teacher? You just allow everybody to talk. Well, sometimes you need some hand raising. So uh-huh. what teachers have to do is first understand what back channeling is so they don't misinterpret it, but then be explicitly explicit in teaching students when to raise their hand and when it's okay to back channel. Both teachers and students need to be able to adapt culturally. And and so I, again, that's that's that kind of work gives me joy to to really mm-hmm. help people understand that we can talk big picture about culture, but until we get to the nuances of how it really plays out in our everyday yeah. life, then we we're just talking. We're not making we're right. not making strides to really close those gaps. Now I did I saw something um, in the write up about you that, that that said something about, and I have to ask, what is entrepreneurial leadership in education. Yeah, so I, um, I'm i on my way to completing my doctorate degree at Johns Hopkins, and you're right, I'm getting my uh, uh, doctoral degree in entrepreneurial leadership. Mm. And so what that means is, you know, these days there are lots of consulting agencies that are supporting schools, and so this program is really designed to help consultants think about what are the leadership skills that we need to have in order to be able to understand systems well enough to help them. So I'm learning lots, and I think it's adding to the work that the Virtuoso team and I do, and and I'm looking forward to to finishing that degree. I I know you are. That's wonderful. So we have about two minutes left, and in those two minutes, I'd like to let you tell us anything that you haven't uh, already told us, and then again, give us your website and, and everything. Okay, sure. Um, So I I think, you know, my overall message to both educators and parents alike is that we've got to really work together to make sure that the needs of our students are met. Um, You know, at Virtuoso, we really work to address both academic and discipline gaps, and those really are one and the same. Uh, An astounding 33% of American students will be suspended between kindergarten and 12th grade at one point. There's no way that our students can be successful academically if they're out of the classroom. Right. So um, it, it's going to take an effort by all of us. And so we encourage um, both parents and educators, if you have questions about, um, you know, what are some things that your school can do or you yourself as a parent can do to support your student, get in touch with us on Facebook. We're at Virtuoso Education Consulting, or you can um, check us out on our website, which is www. Virtuoso Ed, short for education, mm-hmm. dot com. Okay. This has really been very interesting and helpful, and I hope that our listeners will take it to heart. And if you need some help, get in touch. Don't just stand by and not let anything happen. So, Renee, thank you again so much, 
and uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch again sometime. I hope so. It's my pleasure. Okay, so I'll see you. You have a good day. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. I invite you, as always, to write to me. Send me your comments and suggestions. Write to me, Gwen Blackburn, at iHeartMedia.com or 10 Cabot Road in Medford, 02155. Join me on my Facebook, my fan page, Facebook.com, Minority Counterpoint, or join the conversation on Twitter at Gwen Blackburn 5.